I'm here to talk to you about gaining the upper hand during a disaster situation. Not just a natural disaster, but maybe a personal disaster. And when, I'm, when I refer to personal disasters, I'm talking about something serious that might happen in your family life. A sudden death, somebody gets cancer, loss of a home. I had the pleasure of serving in the Coast Guard for 24 years, and two of the major incidents I was involved with was Hurricane Katrina and Deepwater Horizon. During Hurricane Katrina, I was the Deputy Incident Commander for the Search and Rescue Operation, and then went on to be Incident Commander later on for the oil and the hazmat. It was the largest hazmat cleanup in the history of the United States. The Search and Rescue Operation alone involved the rescue of 33,000 people from their homes. That was the Coast Guard that did that, a very proud moment. And then at Deepwater Horizon, I was the actual Incident Commander for Louisiana and all the offshore operations. Give you a sense of how big that was, we had over 47,000 people involved in that incident and over 6,000 vessels. Folks, that was the largest fleet ever to sail the oceans in the history of the world, even bigger than the D-Day invasion. So you can imagine as an incident commander during these situations, all the stress and all the demands, all the information coming my way, and how do you manage that kind of thing? So, after Katrina, a bunch of us got together and said, look, we've got to develop some kind of a model that helps us focus in times of disaster because you can imagine all the distractions you might have. So we came up with a five critical success factors and we call it the hand model. Nice and convenient, right? Fits the hand. So when you're in a disaster and you're like, oh man, which way do I go? You talk to the hand. <laughs> it's kind of convenient, right? Simple for Coast Guard people. So. Uh, so the most important part of the hand is, is the palm, right? That supports all the other fingers, all the other five critical success factors. That palm represents you. Even in a personal disaster, you need to take care of yourself, and we'll talk about ways to do that a little bit later. Well, let's talk about some of the other fingers, the thumb. Without the thumb, the hand can't do the job, and this is about taking care of your people, right, during a disaster. These are the responders. So how do we do that kind of thing? We gotta make sure that they have food, that they have water, that they have the resources that they need to get the job done, and also moral and emotional support. So these poor workers were working in 95 degree Fahrenheit temperatures with over 98% humidity. That was our biggest, biggest hazard during this incident was heat stress. So you've gotta take care of people. And of course, you have to take care of the incident. So you saw those pelicans earlier? These, they're being released here. So those nine pelicans that you saw were all oiled. We were able to capture them, and now we're releasing them back to the environment. So you gotta take care of the incident. That's your pointer finger, right? Let's get the job done. Let's rescue people. Let's put out that fire. Let's clean up that oil spill. Very, very, very important. So the third finger, which is the middle finger, and I'm not gonna be the first guy ever to show a middle finger provocatively, so I'm gonna avoid that. I'll keep it sideways for everybody. You gotta take care of the boss, and the boss is really important. Why is that? Why do you have to take care of the boss? So you can see Admiral Allen, he's in here. He was my boss, this is like two weeks into the spill. Doesn't look very happy, does he? So you gotta take care of him so that you can get an endorsement at the end of the day for the great work that you did. And of course, his boss was the president. And then the ring finger, right? This is our engagement finger, right? This is the public you serve. This is the community we serve. So that's the key, right? This is about them. So the Deepwater Rise and oil spill, it destroyed people's ways of life. Our mission was to restore their way of life. So that's something you have to do. And we're not just talking about the public, we're also talking about political figures, the mayor, the commissioners, prominent leaders in the religious community. All these people need to be taken care of as stakeholders. And last but not least, not the most important finger, but an important nevertheless, is you've got to take care of the media. Very, very, very critical. So those are the things that you do in a big disaster. And it's really, really important. So I had a friend of mine call me a few years ago. He had something very, very bad happen to him and his family. And he asked me for some advice. And the first thing I told him was, take care of yourself. And he said, well, what else can you offer? You're this big disaster guy. Is there anything you can, any advice you can give? And I thought, 
you know what, let me get back to you. So I put together a model for personal disasters, things that happen to you in your life. And it worked for him, and it worked for a few others. This is a slide from Hurricane Katrina. And these people are suffering a personal disaster, wouldn't you agree? It's not just about the hurricane. Fortunately, we were able to rescue and save their lives, but they lost everything. This picture tells a whole story. So how do we use this model to potentially help you with a personal disaster? Well, just like we talked about taking care of yourself, in a personal disaster, you need to do that, even if it means you have to climb a few roof rooftops to get rescued. But make sure you're taking care of yourself. During the Deepwater Horizon incident, I lost 27 pounds in a month, All right? Finally, somebody said, you need assistant. <laughs> Make sure you're eating and you're sleeping and you're resting and you're taking care of yourself because that's very, 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 very critical. And what other things can you do to take care of yourself? You got to make sure you're eating right, you're sleeping, you have a good diet, that you're getting rest, and you may need to get some counseling. In the old days, we used to say, ah, oh, just suck it up. You're a man, you're a woman, suck it up. Now we know that the science tells us that that's bad for you that leads to heart disease, stroke, stress, anxiety, suicide. So make sure you get help in that regard because you need to help yourself. And the next group of people you need to help, which is the thumb, is your family. They may need some rescuing as well. So take care of your family. Make sure they're sleeping, they're getting the right food, exercise is also important. And don't underestimate the power of hugs. Hugs are incredibly powerful. So during the search and rescue operation in Katrina, I got a lot of hugs for what we did. In Deepwater Horizon, I had to give hugs. There was a gentleman, we were in a town hall meeting, and CNN was there, and ABC, and all the cameras, and there were videotaping this town hall meeting. And this old gentleman walks down this aisle with his grandson, and he's crying. And he says to me, Captain, am I going to be able to fish again? And I said, yes, you will, and it'll be the best fishing you ever had in your life. And then I gave him a hug. Did that make a difference, you think? It was honest, it was sincere, and it made a difference in that gentleman's life. Okay? So don't underestimate the power of hugs. You've got to take care of things when something bad happens to you. Develop an action list, and there are plenty of action lists online. FEMA, ready.gov, remember that. Go on there. They have checklists for not only natural disasters, but personal family disasters as well. Red, American Red Cross, Salvation Army. I can go on and on, but get a hold of these sheets, put them in a binder, and have it ready for not just natural disasters, but anything personal that happens in your life. And probably most importantly, do as much of that checklist as you can ahead of time before something happens. You want to be ahead of the curve. And sit down with your family and have that serious talk, that what-if talk about natural disasters and personal disasters. The time is, is to do that is now. And don't forget the middle finger. That's your workplace. Believe it or not, if we're all working, we spend more time at work than we do at home in our lives. Work is very important. And work, it can be a resource for you. A lot of companies now have employee assistance programs. People can donate leave and personal time. There's also financial aid, loans and grants that you can take advantage of. And suppose you don't want to deal with all the employees. Find a spokesperson at your workplace that can help you and represent you in times of disaster or need. And they can be your spokesperson. But don't forget work, because eventually you're going to have to go back there. The marriage finger. You know what? When a disaster happens, sure, you're in sea, you're in a boat, you feel like you might drown, it's dark and stormy, there's noise, there's distractions, there's all kinds of demands, but there's a boat behind you. And these are your close friends and your extended family. Whether you realize it or not, in a disaster, these people are also in a boat. They're not in the same boat as you, obviously, but they're in a boat. And they want to help you out. What a tremendous resource. They'll cut your lawns. They'll, mow, they'll shovel your driveways when it snows. They'll provide you meals. They'll provide you transportation. Same thing. If you don't want to deal with them, if you don't want them to be a distraction and a noise, 
Find a spokesperson to represent you to talk with these folks. They want to help, and they can be a very, very valuable resource in times of crisis. And then, last but not least, media. And what I'm referring to in a personal disaster is social media, the social network. A lot of bad things can happen on Facebook. I recently heard the story of a, of a couple whose business closed. It was a very popular business. And everybody was wondering, geez, I heard so-and-so died. Well, I heard they had a divorce. Well, I heard they got in financial trouble. Well, I heard there was illegal gambling. This was all going on the social network. Reality, all they wanted to do was retire. Okay? Perhaps a more tragic story is a story many years ago of a young teenager who lived very, uh, right next door to me who died of an overdose. And unfortunately, the texts were going around saying that he committed suicide. They were going around claiming that he was using illegal drugs. All kinds of negativity. Probably the most horrific thing was there were pictures of him when he was dead being texted around. A very, very sad situation. Never knew what happened to that family. They left town and they never came back. But the reality is, so how do we deal with this? You got to get ahead of the story. You got to get ahead of the narrative. You got to tell your story. Now, if it's a dark situation, maybe you don't want to tell it. That's fine. That's your choice. But you got to get ahead of it. Now, how do I do this? Well, that boat full of people, that extended family that we talked about, and those close friends, I guarantee you, there's a social media warrior in that group. <laughs> it's probably some 18 and 19 year old kid who just is dying to help you. Okay? So take advantage of that resource. And get ahead of the narrative. Tell your story so that somebody else doesn't do that. So you're thinking, man, all this stuff, how can I do this? Is it really possible? There's a lot of things that go on in a personal and a natural disaster. Use the resources that are available to you, including myself. I'm Roger LaFerrier. I'm one of your neighbors. And it would be my pleasure and my honor to help you get through a personal storm. And last but not least, remember the hand model. Talk to the hand when disaster strikes. And most importantly, take care of yourself. Thank you.